Today is a biggie. How to get that cinematic look and feel for your videos. You're tuned into TravelVids.tv. My name is Dean, and today we're going to look at cinematic video. Break it down, explain what you need to do, what you need to look out for, so that it makes it really easy for you to do. As a definition, cinematic video is defined by a couple of different things in modern times, especially in the YouTube world. Nowadays, people call anything that is slow motion with a good color grade cinematic. But that's a little bit broad, a little bit vague. Today I want to go a bit deeper into the four things that make cinematic, cinematic video what it is. It's called the CMCM. 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 You won't forget that now. Ha! CMCM stands for Composition, Movement, Color and Music. The four ingredients you have to have to make a perfect little cinematic piece of video. The first C, the composition. This is a rule book that is quite thick. There's lots to consider here. But for today, I would like to leave you with two points. I think you should work a lot with the rule of thirds and the leading lines rule. These two are for me the most important thing to consider when you're trying to compose a shot that is cinematic. Rule of third shots and leading line shots have one thing in common. They give the picture space. Cinematic film is inherently associated with wide open spaces. It's the reason that it's used in travel and it's also the reason we use it in adventure films. What good would Lord of the Rings have been without those huge open spaced cinematic New Zealand landscapes? So my word of advice to you is go back to your little rule book of composition, go over them again and make use of this every time you set up a shot. Take the time to set up the shot. Movement is really important when it comes to making cinematic videos. But if you're a complete beginner, I really suggest that you leave this step out for now. And to understand why, we need to go back a little bit of time. When a beginner takes a camera and starts to film something, they hit record and they start to move. Uh. This is the epitome of what a home video looks like. With video, you've got to understand that the primary movement is actually the subject. We're dealing with Harry Potter pictures here. I mean, think about it. The frame is on the wall, but the picture is the part that moves. This part stays still. That's how you need to think. The movement of the camera itself is a secondary movement. And this is only something that you can start to use when you've started to understand the relationship between the subject and the camera itself. The more you practice filming and the more experience you build up, you'll start to learn the spatial relationship between the camera and the subject. And as you get better and better over time, you'll understand how to manipulate the space so that the, the subject and the camera can either move past each other, can move with each other, or can go further away from each other or come closer together. There, there is an unlimited amount of ways that this relationship can be used. If you, you have to start slow with only small basic movements in the beginning. And a tip for you to make this really easy is that if you use slow motion, you get away with absolute murder. And that's why today slow motion is used as the tool to mimic uh, s sort of cinematography. In true cinematography, you don't have to be using slow-mo. If that horse is galloping across the field, well, then the helicopter or the drone needs to chase it at the same speed. And that relationship between the two is what makes it cinematic. In our world, we can use things like slow motion to sort of enhance that feeling, even though the movement is maybe less. So take that all in for a second use slow motion as a hack tool to get cinematic. But if you really want to get good at this, be aware of the space between you and the subject and start to experiment with slow, slow, steady movement between the two of you. The relationship between your camera and your subject is like a sexy tango dance. That's what keeps your, sub your, your audience completely focused and fixed and captivated by what you've created. The second C is for color, color grading. And I'm going to bring the second M forward, the music, and I'm going to lump these two together because it's pretty obvious. You have to have a good color grade and you've got to have good 
emotive cinematic music to complement the shots that you're getting. The great thing with color these days is that all the editing apps and programs all come with these built-in plugins. Uh, you can also go and buy some LUTs. Uh, we'll explain that in another video in the future, uh, which is basically just something that you can drop like a filter on the video. Same thing in Instagram that really enhances the look and feel of your cinematic video. And then the same goes for music. I mean, today there are so many new channels on YouTube where people are saying, please download my music and use it. Make sure to credit people where it is due for the music they created. But um, color and music is really the easiest side of this. Take your time and focus on getting that composition right and then making sure that your movement is pleasing to watch, not too fast, not too slow. Make use of those slow-mos. If you're a complete beginner and you're looking to make some really good looking videos and you need some of these concepts that we're talking about here explained in a sort of easy to follow way, then check out our online course. In two hours, you'll have all the tools and the knowledge you need to make a cool cinematic video using just your smartphone. If you're already beyond that, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. There's lots more tutorials, video hacks and advice coming up for how to make your videos look a whole lot better. My name's Dean, you're watching travelvids.tv.